Got it, got it. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Nadine No, and I'm here with Don Stevens of Don Stevens Art at oh. another Sunday Let's Paint and Draw Along pop up session. And it's a beautiful morning, morning and it's a great time to do some art. Hey, Don. You yeah. glad to see me? <laughs> uh, no, I'm glad to do artwork every morning. <laughs> every, every morning to create. That's what's up. Yeah. It's about creating. That's what I wake up enthusiastic to see. The first thing on my day is my studio and what it is I'm going to do on a day. So I paused up doing a portrait for you guys so we oh. can continue on with our pop-up Sunday. You know, the bottom line is that. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I don't think people actually realize what Don just said. Don makes his bread and butter by uh, doing work for other folks. He commissioned, he teaches, he coaches, you know, he goes out to these elder centers and, you know, all of this is paid. Okay. And he's taking time out of his schedule to spread his passion for observing those things around you for creating, you know? And yeah. I just want to say, I appreciate everything that every moment that I get to spend, you know, creating with you, Don, um, I tell you, now, if anyone uh, didn't catch, I was away last weekend. I tried to come for the full session, but I was in Iceland. And I tell you, my traveling experiences have um, been heightened because of the coaching that I have gotten from Don. Whereas in I start looking at things um, with even a, 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 a more observant eye. Um, yes, I had my cell phone. <laughs> yes, it got moisture behind the lens and the camera shut down. But I also remember that it was really about observing everything. And so that, I just wanna say, it was a, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I really, really uh, enjoyed that opportunity. I came back with a, a little cold, but um, I, I do have some photos that I hope to share later on. Um, but one takeaway from um, from my trip to Iceland was um, this passion, this love for cats. They actually have a Christmas cat and they got a whole thing about it, which I thought was really interesting. And a number of you folks um, in the group wanted to dive into um, uh, the art of, of capturing the the animal drawing animal drawings and the top on the list was cats yeah, how oh, about that feline your domesticated feline that you have in your house with you some of you yes yes you're a and 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 today's subject is rambo the cat all right now if you notice sometimes miss paulette would be here and Rambo would make an appearance. <laughs> and Rambo is the subject for today. So, the, so Don, so the picture, I can pop it up and share just for a second, but those watching, if you go to the feed, you're gonna see the picture, you can download it. The photographer is Miss Paulette. She was trying to capture the cat, cat pose perfectly. But what she talked about was she didn't like all the other stuff in the background. So I'm wondering, how do you approach something where you're grabbing a subject and being able to, to take that and make something out of it, even though everything in the background isn't what you really wanted it to be? And I'm going well, to pay attention. We already did that in a couple of other videos. So I restate it as soon as we get it started. How's everybody doing today? Let's get ready to rumble. Yep. Are we ready to rumble? All 
right. Get the charcoal out, everybody. Get your pencils together. You know what materials you need to have with you at this point, right? So let's get started. So look, you have your paper. I would do this one in a portrait format. And looking at the photograph, I would worry about the cat first and the position of where I'm going to put the cat. That's why I always tell people to find center of whatever the format you're going to be putting it on, whatever surface you're going to be putting on. Even if it was a mural for the wall, you want to find the center of the wall so you can understand where you're going to place things and how you're going to place things on that particular piece of paper or wall or floor or whatever surface you're working on. So, all right. You got your charcoal. It's that soft charcoal, right, everybody? Right, 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 baby, right? Yep, no? Yeah, okay. So what I would do is I would look at this gentleman. What's his name again? Rambo. Rambo. So what I would do is if I'm not really worried about the background per se, I would do this single character a little bit larger on my page. Can you see? And yes, just like with a human being said, you would start off with a circle. Yes, indeedy. Then this is another thing I would do. You see where the muzzle is on the cat? That's what I would do. I'll put another round one down here, representing the muzzle. Yeah, okay. Now the body part. All I would do is scramble in a circle for the upper body, right? For where his chest is and everything. Remember, basic shapes, everybody, basic shapes. That's the breastbone, chest. And he's a healthy critter here, Ram Rambo is. He must have took down a couple of mice and everything, man. <laughs> he's getting fed now, well. <laughs> yeah, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. So now you can do a shape like this to start the legs or the frontal panel because he's sitting on his hind panel. Mm -hmm. That's why he's spreading out at the bottom down there. Rambo's diesel. Rambo done took down a couple of mics. You, you can't tell me no other, Miss Paula. I know this dude done took down some birds or something, man. All right. So then look, you can look at the picture and see there's a muscle that's going to be in here. Then there's the, the leg part here, you see? Mm -hmm. What you're going to see is a, a muscle part that does this in the middle here, like so, and then like in here. So then you can adjust this. He's a health, healthy cat. That's what we like seeing. I know I do. You don't want no skinny cat now, not unless he's muscular. Now, if he's muscular and skinny, that means that he's a hunter. That dude is serious business. Mm -hmm. He ain't got no time for the play play. You see? So I would start it off there. That's not the bottom of his legs now. That's the separation at the joint before you get down to where the paws are, you see? So now if you look straight up, you can see side of, the face, side of his head here. You look down where the paw is, you look straight down, the paw doesn't go no further than that point than the side of his head. Mm -hmm. You see? You look on the opposite side, you can say to yourself, look straight up. It's almost where you would say the outside of the eye would be, you see? And then now I'm saying that paw is not going no further than that. You see? This is the way you... Tackle, you always tackle the picture or your source information or your portraiture, or if you're doing a still life or anything you're doing, you want to simplify it. Make it basic shapes. Look towards the contour edge, the contour edge of the anything. And then you start making your basic shapes there. You see? Because if you look, now if we look, one. Two, three, four and a half. So if we go with what the head is here, this head of the cat, and you go one, two, three, four. So the cat's feet is about three and a half, four heads down. You see, now I would put a mark where the feet are going to be. 
And the furthest foot forward is the one that's on the left side, which is his right foot. You see? So then I would round that off. Just round it off. Make it a basic shape for right now. And then you come back and design it. Help us to see it. You see? You can make this paw a little bit thicker now to go with the idea of what's there. You see? Paw is there. But we're not finished, though, so don't think that. Now, this paw here, he's pulling back slightly. Like, Rambo's like, he's like, he's cool with what she's doing, but he's mindful. He's like, okay, what, 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 what's going on here? So you see how what happened? I had to move over. If you look at the picture, there's a space in between the paws here. Mm -hmm. And if you come up, right around the top of where the top of the paw is ankle is, you can see where the bottom of his belly is sitting on the floor. And from that angle, you can see how his belly is coming upward on the side here. And you can see where there's extra fur there. I would bring it around because he's sitting on the hind panel. See that? Mm -hmm. Look at how we already got it looking like he's sitting down. Now, what you're seeing on the side here is a little bit of that hind paw. So I'll just put a little shape there just to, just to remind me that that's that hind paw that he's sitting on. You see, now I'm looking across. If this is here, I'm looking down. This is where it's curving in because he's a healthy critter there and his chest is kind of big. Yeah, he's got nice winter fur on him now, huh? Then we would bring it up. Right in here, there's a U shape right in there. If you really look at the shadow, almost like he was going to have a lion's mane growing. Rainbow is serious business. <laughs> yeah, he's got that look like he wants to just jump out and sit on your shoulder or something. <laughs> yeah, I like cats like that. I used to have a cat who used to just like to sit on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yep, I had a black cat. Yeah, Rambo, you're giving me that feeling. See, that's what you want to do, too. Look in there. See if you can feel that feeling. Notice, I don't have anything formulated just yet except for these basic tapes. So if you have the eyes in there already, you're moving ahead. And that's okay, as long as you have confidence to know you're moving ahead, you see? because now his head is going to expand too, based upon what we do. Like if this is here and I said that's the outside of that foot, then that means that, uh-oh, his head is gonna expand. That's gonna be the outside of the eye there. Head is gonna expand just a little bit, you see? Mm -hmm. So then that means now, look, that paw comes out here and he's pulling it back. See that? Mm -hmm. And that's what I would do. I would make the paw. Just the basic shape of it, though. Notice I'm not worrying about his um, particular uh, pattern just yet of his fur. None of that. We're just looking at the edges of his body and simplifying the different parts. Just like if it was a human being, you simplify each part that you see. Is there a cat anatomy thing going on? Yes. Yes. But I try to show people based upon <laughs> objects before we get caught up in all the lingo. No, no laughter, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep going. <laughs> it's all good. Um, we make him a little bit healthier on this left side, on the right side here, which is really his left side. If you mm -hmm. notice, the paw is bending right about here and then coming this way, you see? Mm -hmm. Now he's. you can see where it's bending here to get to this part here where it looks like he's pulling that paw up and back. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we'll, we'll talk about how many, you know, how would you say separation or, or digits of, of, of the paw of a cat is. But first we just wanna worry about getting those spaces together, getting the paws together, getting the shapes together how things are going to move, you see? 
like we can angle this a little bit more, bring this angle in a little bit more on the side of the cat. You see, and that helps. Now we got to get the fatness on this side because we see that that underneath all that fur and stuff, you can see he's really sitting on that hind panel. And where is that hind panel? Well, you see the paw is here. The turn of the, the, the joint is here, right? What you want to look at is that hind paw is sitting right up top. The bottom of it is right above the top paw, the front paw on the right side. Mm -hmm. You see that? That's why I just put that shape there like this, that line there. Mm -hmm. Just to say where that particular item is. It's almost in alignment with the bottom of his belly here touching the ground. Mm -hmm. And then if you look across again, that other paw on the other side is right in the same area. Mm -hmm. You see, because his body is moving or leaning to our right, which would be his left. Mm -hmm. So he's getting himself poised to pay attention, looking Miss Paulette right in the face. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's got an intense one. I wonder if she gives him a uh, fresh fish, like how I used to give my cat. I used to give my cat fresh fish. Go to the market and buy him uh, salmon and different types of fish and things like that. My cat particularly liked tuna. Raw. Mm -hmm. He didn't want it from the can. As soon as I brought it in raw, oh, it was on. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know how to ready to eat boy and that tail gets to moving around <laughs> mm -hmm. cat character man that's all we like them man but they psychos though <laughs> yes they are i love them for it though i love cats for that whole mentality they got they're just ruthless and you don't know sometimes when they're gonna go for it you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> you just know they're gonna and you wind up looking at your cat, don't do that. You bet not. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then what does the cat do? He does it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So then look. Now if you look on this side, we come down, right? But then it gets wider right around here. If you look, you can see why. It's here it gets wide right around the base. So that's right around like the third head. You see where his girth is coming in. And you can play with it a little bit here and there. Look at his edge and you can cut it out and make it look like it's more like him. Yeah, there you go. You see, all of this is coming from here. So most of this is coming from here, right? Mm -hmm. The formulation of the belly is on this side. Mm -hmm. Now when you get that going, now you can see where this is where that, that foot is or the leg is or the other part is right here. And then now that fur and the rest of his body is over top of that point. We don't see the tail. Mm -mm. So his tail is like behind him possibly. So now you see it, we got him basically leaned to the side, you see? Mm -hmm. Basically without the facial features, without the ears just yet. But the body is there, he's leaning now. This is where I would make that decision, like how you were saying, Nadine. Miss Paulette wanted to say, okay, how do we pull this out of context if I don't want to do all the other stuff in the background? This mm -hmm. is the way you would, you would, you would, how would you say, superimpose, as they call it, or zoom in on your character, make them bigger, the most important thing on the page. Mm -hmm. So that way, this is when I start making decisions like, if I'm going to use some of the background, like the table, I would put the table in right here where it's coming in and then put it right here and then turn it to make it look like he's standing on something. You mm -hmm. see? I wouldn't put the chairs in there. Okay. You see, I would take the chairs away. Okay. I would just make it look like it's a table that has no drop cloth on it, none of the... Uh, the vase or with the fake flowers, I would take all that off the table. I would okay. just make it seem like I'm sitting on a table and doing this early, like, look, uh, let's see. The back edge of the table is hitting them right here. So then I just would carry that across or over to this side and then turn it. 
Okay. This side, then I would just turn it. Okay. To make it seem like it's one continuous table there, right? That he's perched on to look at. Uh -huh. All right. Now, what I would do next is I would just play with it and see if I can get a front edge here. Oh, right. okay. It's around we sit normal. You see, try to carry it around off scene and try to bring it back in. You see, just that little bit on the side here. Okay. Possibly thick on the table. You see, make the table thick in the front. So you see how it looks like he's sitting on a little table or something? Mm -hmm. Now, the background, we can fill in with our background, except we did all the other ones for, like how we talked about. And it's still lives and all of that. Right. So we'll talk about that too. Uh, your table, Miss Paulette, in this picture is black. <clears throat> so that would be, yeah, that would be up to us to make a decision whether or not we would make this a certain degree of blackness or darkness, like a like a ninety percent darkness, because his shadow still has to go in. We have to make up a shadow. Mm -hmm. So if you was in on the picture and everything, you can see on the cat. That there's going to be a darkness in here. Definitely. Uh -huh. That's a shadow. You see? Uh -huh. If you look on the side of the cat, there's a reflection right here that can serve like a shadow. You see that on the side of the picture there, Nadine? Yeah. Like the cat is a reflection almost. Mm -hmm. Because the table is shot. And then now we're getting towards that, uh, uh, well, it looks like a chip clip to me because that's what I use them for. When you have potato chips and you put the, those type of yeah. big clips on the potato chip. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what that looks like to me. And then I would bring that shadow even closer to the foot here, or probably just bring it around to the front. So now you know this whole area and in the front of this paw is going to be dark. Mm -hmm. This paw has to be back. This paw is back, you see? Now, notice when we put that shadow in, look at how that paw feels like it's being pulled back. Yeah. See, so then now this whole side, with based upon what we have in there, if you look at the tabletop, you can see it lightly. There's a reflection of him, just like this going in here. And then now we have it. Remember, go left or right when you put it in this basic tone to see where the shadow would be at. Yeah. We're going to play with that. And now we have a hypothetical space in place that we pulled them out of. Now, if we don't like the tilt of where we have that at because we took it from the actual photograph, we can change it. To make it look like he's just sitting on his own little world, his own little table in there. So all that is is just bringing the curve down. I'll leave that up to you guys, what you want to do for each and every one of your own pieces. You know, you got to have devices where you can have some stuff that you can do. Like, say, for instance, if you wanted to put the vase on there, I would put it right on the edge right here like, and bring it in. That's for people that want to put things on the table. This is how I would start putting things on the table. And then I would pull them out of their natural rhythm that she has on the table. I would put it where I want to put it. I'm putting this one here. Where are you guys going to put your balls at if you decide to put it on it? Oh, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. If you don't want that in there, you don't have to put it in there. I'm just putting it there to show you that you can pull in certain elements. Mm -hmm. You know? If, for instance, I wanted to put the paper towel on there or the, 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 the uh, table covering that's pulled back. Mm -hmm. See, I will put it right in front of the balls here. Have that here and have this part touch the cat right here. And all of this would go behind the cat. That would be the uh, tabletop coming behind the cat and around now. Mm -hmm. That would be where the start of that table uh, 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 tablecloth would be. Mm -hmm. Now, would I worry about all that other stuff that she has there? Like she's saying, it looks like a, 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 a ceramic fish or something on the tabletop. There's another thing that the cat, another paper that the cat is sitting on. I would just make it look like it's the tablecloth coming across. You see, and then play up the idea of the tablecloth. Whether or not 
Now, there's another thing you can do when you're doing something, taking freedoms. I don't have to do that uh, uh, plaid design that's in the background. Mm -hmm. I can make it a plain colored cloth that's, that's a little bit lighter than the tabletop, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit darker than the vase. See? Got it. So now I just fill in lightly with a light tone, the tabletop. Just to say where my darks and lights may or may not be. Mm -hmm. This will pretty much be considered like your halftone stage. If you ever hear, hear, hear artists talking about, especially when they're doing photorealism or, or doing oil painting, mm -hmm. you hear them say, oh, I'm doing my halftones now. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my underpainting, my halftone underpaintings now. This is the stage that we're at. You're still working out where things are going to go. You're, you're blocking in where your lights and darks may be. You see, you're putting in certain things and you're adjusting in this earlier stage where things would go. Bring at that cat that looked like it was moving on my screen. Almost spooked me out. <laughs> <laughs> That's how tense Rainbow's uh, uh, look is. I'm looking at the screen over here on my side. He I wants said, to pout. Yeah, I'm like, what? I'm like, wait a minute. I know Nadine did not send me a video, so why is this cat looking like he's moving? Reflection, don't mind me, you guys. But it's you a see, great, I it's a great cat, uh, uh, instant capture. Like, she captured a moment. It's like, that's his personality. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what cats is all about. He's about to pounce on something or on jump with too much Paulette to do something next. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's very photogenic. He, he loves to pose for pictures and stuff. Oh, I can tell that dude is intense, Miss Paulette. And how are you this morning? Good morning, Miss Paulette. I'm good. I'm good. I'm slow, slow, slow. I get uh, this, this the phone ring. I'm gonna have to start turning my phone off. You know, when I go to bed because uh. That ringing of the phone and, you know, it just breaks the rest. And then by the time you get a good sleep, you know, it's kind of, that alarm goes off. Maybe, you know, I had a hard time getting up. Uh, uh, well, you're talking to a person like myself that's like a night stalker <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a day walker at the same time. So I'm, I'm, I'm Wesley Snipes character, Blade. <laughs> I can stay up all night. And be up in the next morning, no problem. People that know me, they'll say, yeah, he's weird like that. I don't know how he's able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like me that. in the Marine Corps, too. <laughs> so, yeah. Got to be able to do it. All right, let's look at this, these ears and stuff now. Let's just say where the ears are going to be, where the eyes are. You know, we can say center right here, this cat, right there. But he's very much frontal. He's looking right at us. He's not playing no games. <laughs> so then look, right above the muzzle, I would say halfway here, this is where the eyes are going to be set. Okay. That's the height of the eye. Now let's look. If we really look towards the inside, we look towards the middle. And if we take a measurement of the cat eye, turn it to the side, you can get one of his eyes in the middle to see what that, that spread is here. You see? And then those half that. So then look, I'm gonna go here and then here. Notice what I did. I did a space that mimics. What I'm seeing of the cat's bridge of his nose. Mm -hmm. And it, I know if this is middle, it's got to be halfway on this side. So whatever shape I made or whatever space I make on this side, I have to duplicate it on the right side to get the same type of space. I'm in the guesstimations, you guys. Guesstimations are cool. Why? Because that's the whimsicalness of the artwork that everybody likes to buy into. You know, my hand may wiggle a little bit. I might be off just a little bit, but that weird being off is what people look for a lot of times. 
Mm-hmm. That's what brings it the supposed character. Now look, if I look from the middle of the paw here in a photograph and look straight up, that's where uh-huh. the edge of his eyes are. The outside edge of his eyes right there. Now if I re look again on the outside of the foot here, that's where the outside of the eye is going to be over here. See, so then now I can come in and start the arch for the eye right in here and the same arch right in here. What? See, same right in there. Boom, and then boom. See, that starts the idea. It starts everything off. It gives you an idea. Are you, going to, are you saying that that has to be permanent? No, I'm saying you're leaving yourself the allowance to be able to expand or fix the way you need to. And then for some of those people that like to ask, yeah, Don, do you really take do all of this when you're painting and drawing? Yeah, but it's moving faster because I have a, already have an understanding of my story. So every artist, I don't care who you are, if you're just drawing on Sundays with us today, or if you're doing it a more in a continuous uh, uh, matter or fashion, you're going to make your own shorthand. It's just like when you're writing your name. You can write your name different ways and different, you know, cursive styles if you wanted to. The same thing happens when you get your confidence together when you're looking at something to replicate. The secret is simplification. Now you just need areas where you can have things open enough so that you're able to adjust the way you need to. You see, I'm able to adjust the way I need to. Let's put the pupil in the eyeball in there. Turn it around, right in there. If I look straight across, tear duct is right there. Boom. That's the cat's eye right there. That's the outside of the cat's eye. His pupil, their pupils are pretty funny, but He's letting us know what his intent is. His eyes, they're kind of triangulated, so he's already in that mode, and he's already taking in a lot of light. See, it's almost round, that dark spot in there. And I would just put in something just to represent how it's starting on both sides. Yeah, like this one is coming from here, and then this one is coming from here. You already got that intense look at that guy right there. Look at that. It's already in there. You want to simplify it, though. See, I'm not trying to take it to the finish line. I'm just trying to get things in there so I can say where things like, look, this tear duct is here. The tear duct. Put the tear duct in here. Same way. You see? Yeah. And we can play with it a little bit. When we get a chance to, we're going to play with it a little bit to get the eyes where we need them to be. And that's when we're talking about the eye construction and all this good stuff of the cat and the anatomy at that level. You see? Now, if you look up from the middle of that, you can see that's the start of where one ear is right here. If we look up from the middle of the pupil here, we'll see that's where the other ear starts, right in there. They're both at the same level, too. You see? Symmetrical. That's just the start of the opening and where the touching of the, the ear is to the skull. Because if you look between there, there's that, that area right here that's doing this to get to the ear. Now, a lot of people be wanting to know what's a measurement to get the proper placement of the ears or the proper measurement of the ears and all this good stuff. A lot of times I just say it's pretty much half of the head. You know what I mean? Now, if it seems like it's too big at that point, then you just adjust it. But now we're looking that outside of the foot, the peak of the ear doesn't go past there. And I definitely can look across and I can see that this one's a little bit higher so it doesn't go there. And then if I look down, yeah, it's in alignment with this here. 
And then now we have it. So now look here. And now look at here. The air doesn't come. No pat, nowhere near where the front of the eyes are here. See, and then now we have the one ear here. Now we have the other ear come straight from here to the side of the head now. See, and it's at the same height where the other ear is. A line goes up horizontally speaking, that horizontal alignment. You see, and then there we have it. His ears is there. Rambo is almost there, Miss Paulette. What you think? I'm like a wow. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so neat. And I, I would like, would have never thought of drawing an animal like this. You know, like this, just so neat. How you doing this? Yeah. I told you, Miss Paulette, I got you. I told everybody <laughs> out there, me and Miss, me and Nadine, oh, got you guys. Uh, it's all, always all about simplification, Miss Paulette. Never forget it. Always simplify everything. Make it use the, the uh, what they used to use for the Macintosh computer, what they said they build it for the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> I use it all the time. If you do that first to build it up, then you'll be able to place things the way you need them. You can erase it, adjust the eye. You can look where things are aligning. You can fatten his face up a little bit more, condense it more. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You got the basics there. Now, if you look, look, you get the nose and everything because a cat nose is different than a dog's nose. Like a dog nose, oh man, I, I wish I could, be, could have the eraser for it. Maybe next time I'll work on that. I'll have the eraser board every now and then. But a cat nose is more triangle. Mm -hmm. A dog's nose looks more like a Superman symbol. You know the Superman symbol on his chest? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you look at the outline, the outline of a Superman S on Superman's chest, that's the shape of a dog's nose. Mm -hmm. A cat nose is more diamond-like or more triangular. It's really a triangle. Right. And the nostrils sit differently. They go back into the head. Whereas with the dog, it sits out on the side. That's why you get those angles on the side like that, like how my fingers are. Uh -huh. That makes the nose broad. And then it goes in and then it does a line on the bottom like the Superman angle. But with a cat, it's different. So let's go into that idea of the cat being a little bit different. One thing is, is that we can take an eye, right? We can take the eye of the cat, right? Uh -huh. okay. Here we have one, right? It's going up and down. Then now you do one more. That's where the cat's nose is going to be, uh -huh. right? You see? Okay. See how easy that was? Yeah. Everything has its own type of symmetry. Do I know the cat anatomy? Yeah, but still, with drawing animals, it's easier to show you how to draw an animal uh, by looking at its edges rather than having to know or pound you to know uh, the anatomy. As you're drawing the animal of your liking, you'll get to know the anatomy each time. And, and since, Ms. Paulette, you are a, a, a cat lover, oh. you're going to have you're going to have more of an affliction of understanding the shape of the cat after a while because after doing it a couple of times, your love for your cat Rambo is going to come through your hand and eye. And then you're going to be able to draw them based upon that, not based upon you understanding the cat. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So, so don't worry. Just keep working on that. Keep looking at your cat. You can look at him while we're working, too, because you got the photograph, but then you have him there with you. You can really look at his muscles and see his attitude and put more attitude into the piece, if you uh -huh. chose. Now, look. This is his cheekbone right in here. That's his what? Cheekbone. Cheekbone. Okay, cheekbone. Yeah, it's right up underneath the eye, just like ours is, too. Uh-huh. See that? Because now, then this part comes in. 
It comes in here. And then now that's that other round part, but let's get the nose in first here. This is the front between here that comes to the nose here. You see? Now from here, we make it triangular. Here and bring it in. Here and bring it in. See what I did? And then now, we get rounder in this area here. Round it in here. See? Because then now you put your mouth down here. You got to make it little. Don't make it look like a dog now. This comes in a little bit of a fur here. There you go. <clears throat> you see, because that line has to be in the middle. The line is here and then here and then here. Oh. In this round. In this round. You see? Yeah, I'm working on that little triangle thing that you know. That's why I said you got your kid back there. You can look at him, look at him. You know? Now this is where you can start seeing where some of the fur may be. You know, that, that pattern that's on his face. Where those darks and lights be. I would put a light brushing away that fur. See, it's in front of the ear here. See, so how does that come across in front of the ear there? You see? If I look here, now this is where all this other stuff is happening. So, with all of this turning in, see here. And then he, see that? Because right, this is right where that first stops coming up, right in here. You see, right in here. You got that same movement in here. Yep. Over here and then here and across here. And now I take my needed eraser and I just start getting that together now to say we're a thing. Oh, yeah, we got him. Oh. And now we start that basic stuff that's happening in there. We should pretty much have his face together. Now we start working on this chunkiness of the fur in here now. You see where that darkness is there? And then his darkness is here, around here now. Fur now. You see, if we look at his back, you see his eyes, his back is coming up. That's what makes you know he's about to try to jump or something. And now I would come back in this area together. Let me shout that line coming all the way around. And now look, got him now. Got that feeling of him like he's about to move or something. He's about to do something. But if you look across from his eye, that's where you see his back punching on this here left side. Uh -huh. You see, as soon as we put it in, I'm not saying erase away the side of his face here. His side of his face is still there like that. Uh -huh. But if you look at the picture, his back is hunching up. Yeah. So then now that fur is moving like this. You see, it's moving round like this. Round. Here. That's all his chest muscles in there. And you see how I got him to get in there? Yeah. At first, he's not going to look right at first to you. No, he's not going to look right at first. But right now, you see how I did it on the screen. He wasn't looking right at first. I'll be honest with you. But this is what we do as artists. You're building. You look at the edges. You're comparing contrast to the photograph. Uh -huh. We're positioning together. 
Once you've got it, you can see it. It doesn't have to be absolute and exact to the picture. What I do is I try to tell people be expressionistic or impressionistic. If you can get the feeling of that moment, then you've done your job. Yeah. You see, we're living in an era where if you wanted to be absolutely that, then you take a digital photograph like how we got, you run it through Photoshop or, you know, uh, Adobe Illustrator or Canvas or one of these other programs, and you take the, 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 the different uh, layers off by using a filter or two, adjust the contrast, the saturation, <laughs> and then you'll have a line drawing based upon the photograph. It's pretty much like how they, the, uh, the digital portals. So you would take the color photograph, and knock out the hike up the contrast, bring down the saturation, do with the lightness and darkness, the hue of it, and then now you will have hard end lines around this. The photograph. Oh, God. Let me know. Okay. This is where you do certain things to you. This is where we can start blowing up and look at what the paw is doing and then how many people we can't have. So, you cat lovers out there, come on. Nadine, tell me now. How many digits does a cat have? Uh. Huh? Is it is it one? Is it is it four? Is it five? Five uh, what? Claw? Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah, we say digits too, but you can say claws. You know what I mean? We can say toes too. We want to keep it human like. <laughs> we can say toes too. How many are there? I because I, I think it's four in the front and one in the back, or is that dogs? I don't know. Let's look. Let's look. Uh, I think it's right here. Let me see. What the meaning of your feet? Oh, he just moved. We got one, two, three, four. Where would the thumb be? That's like in the that back. Nod on the side there. Yeah. Of his, see, yeah. if you look at the front, it's a little like not. That's the thumb. So they have five digits, yeah. five claws. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar like a human being, don't it? Sure does. Sounds like a real, a real reality for the, how would you say, oxygen and hydrogen filled environment that we're in, don't you think? Mm -hmm. You go in uh, there, aren't you? Huh? You go in there. Oh, uh, yeah, well, we have to on that level. So then look, we can split this paw right in the middle right here. Mm -hmm. If you look at his paw, you see that right at where the joint is, there's a crease where that fur creases. Mm -hmm. So then you have one digit here on the side here and then one digit here. Can you see how I'm dividing that up? Yep. On the screen, okay. So now I erase away here. I erase away here. And I erase away here. I erase away here. And it looks like that. it's about our four. Mm -hmm. You see? That's the spaces where they're at. Now, if we look above this crease, you see a little knot right there. Mm -hmm. That little knot is what we would call our thumb. Mm -hmm. In human terms. And, it, and if you notice, it's on the inside too, as well, just like our thumbs. Are. So whether you know it or not, it, it's a it's a claw on the bottom of that joker too, right in the middle of that joker too. Yep. Yep. And it helps them to grab just like how we do, but not as good as we do. You see, now we have, have that knot there. We have the first digit here. Now that paw, it normally angles towards the front like so, and it widens on the side. The knuckle is up here. You see, 
And this one here, you really can't see, but you see the nail shoot right in the middle. Mm -hmm. See that? Right in the middle of that digit, that's when you see that nail uh, 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 fly in the fur. And the other one, and the other two is not that, you know, how would you say, he's, he's got a nice cloaking system. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's how you know this guy is serious, boy. I'm liking Rambo. This dude is serious. Now, look, on the other side, it's right in here. You see? And it's the same idea. If we have this one in the middle, you have this one here, right here, because the two that's in the front are the biggest. And the other two taper off on the sides, you see? Mm -hmm. So then here, 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 and then this one here. And then where's the fifth one, everybody? That fifth one is right up in here on the side, right, right. And we're looking at the photograph. The photograph is telling us that, sure, we can go online, sure. There, there's, uh, how would you say, an absolute way of getting that together. But the way I do it is, I do it as an illustrator. I look at the challenge of how do I make those shapes make you believe that it's a cat? You see, those parts there is what you see if you look. And then that's going this way now, and that's the, the other pattern in his mind. You see, and then there we have it. Right where that crease is, that's where that other paw is, or the other digit that's making up his paw. And now if you look, we got it. This paw here is the one behind him. This is the one that he's sitting on. So we really don't see the digits in that one. But we see the digits in this one on the right side, which is his left hind panel. And we're seeing about three toes. You see that? Now you can see it better zoom up the picture. If you zoom in the picture to that area on the bottom right side of the cat, you can see it even better. So a lot of times what I do is you guys are not seeing it, but hold on, let me see. Let me turn it around. All right, you see my screen there? Yeah. They did? Yep. Yeah. See what I did? I zoomed in on the cat picture. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I zoomed in on that panel there. You see that, Miss Paulette? Yeah. So I zoomed in on this area right here. So you can see the paws. You see the other one there. Uh -huh. Hind panel on the left side. Front panel, front panel, hind panel. Uh -huh. See? Now we see the middle of his belly. You see the, well, not the middle, but the bottom that we're seeing based upon how he's sitting. Right. Notice that it's right where the feet are. That tells you a lot. Now, if you look over to the side of the paw, you'll see there, there's one split in the middle here, right? And then you're seeing one on the side here. You're only seeing three of the digits. And then the nail is right in the middle here, here and then here. Notice how I'm just putting a line and say the nail is there. Oh, we can't see that because you're still on the computer. I know. I want okay. you to look at the photograph and look at the computer and look at your photograph. Okay. Now, watch, watch. Turn around. And there we go, right? Yeah, I think that's the whole screen, all right? Yeah. Yep, okay. You see? So now, mimic that area now. You see? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Hello? Yeah, we're mimicking the area. Oh, okay. So now look, erase out around that nail there, erase out around this nail here, and then you have the two bigger toes, right? And now the little small one that's on the side that you're seeing, you're only seeing three of the high quarter. That's it. Then you can come back and shape it the way you need to. You see, now we come back. You can see that fur coming around like this and then over. Then you can see the knuckle of those hind 
of that hind quarter of those toes. You see, but the fur is coming over and then laying down on the side. Ooh, we got him. Yeah, he looks like he's about to jump out of the painting, boy. Watch out. Yeah, buddy. So now this is where now I will go ahead on in and And now I start establishing, you know, dark and light areas. So now this is where I, I take my tortillion or I get my paper towel together. Remember everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now with all that in there, I can squint my eyes and look and see where some of the dark shadow areas are. You see, and I'm smudging those areas in. Even underneath the cat's chin here, you see? Notice what's about to happen, even in this area here. Helping me get all that together, the movement of things. Now I'm going to start finalizing how I'm feeling about where my cat is, you see? Mm -hmm. You know? Smudge down again, you see? Yeah. Because now we can come back. Now this is where you can look and say where things are. You know, you really come back now. Yeah. Here. Around that edge there. That edge there. You start coming back and redeveloping certain areas now. You see? So, I think we'll do this for two sessions with you guys. We just want to talk about that first aspect. How do we pull it out of context, Ms. Paulette, like how you asked, uh, Nadine? Mm -hmm. And then how do we use the dark and light patterns? How do we, uh, how would you say, uh, add in in the talk to understand where the lights are, you see? I'm just looking for the patterns of where darks and lights are. Not the fur pattern now, just the darks and lights. So I'm squinting my eyes and I'm looking where the fur is. You see the setup where some of these darks are. Look in the middle here, you have the dark area or a shaded area here in this white fur. See, we're going to come back with that. Uh, if you're on tone paper, white chalk, if you're not on tone paper, then we have to really smudge in here. So when you come back to erase out those areas on that white paper, you can see where those lights are just going to jump out as soon as you erase them out. Everybody that's on tone paper like me, you're going to come back with the white chalk, and then you'll start putting in those lights. But you're going to put in the lights of the fur first, and then put in the super lights of the light hitting them from the window on the right, on the left side here coming in. And this way we can take eyes and all that great stuff. And then we can come in here and do the smudging in the eyes and stuff like this. You see? This is going to come back and reinforce things. So what you're doing now is just trying to get the shading together. Get the tonal work. Some of the lighter tones first you come back and reestablish your darker darks and your lighter lights. Now I can come back in here with a smaller eraser and erase out some of this stuff that's going on. And you see, before I put the real light in his eyes, you see? Yeah, look at that glowing that's happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like doing animals. That's why I say I'm an illustrator painter. Mm -hmm. And I try to help people go that way too, be an illustrator painter. So that means that every now and then you can do things just, be, just based upon your skills. And then other things you can do as a painter with your emotions. Get it? Thank you. Yeah. So. <laughs> <Y 'all got it. laughs> Yeah, 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 I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, you guys.
Y'all gonna make everybody else think this is crazy to do. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not crazy to do. It's just, yep, we're just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the hind quarter there, a little bit of the first. I can make them a little bit more meaner on this right side. Because he's really leaning on to that, that right side really right. good. That's over top of that old hind panel. Mm -hmm. That's how I would do that. And then now I would smudge it a little bit. Because now when, once I start only worrying about the darks and lights in these areas and how they read based upon me putting them in this area, trying to mimic what it looks like in the cat or in the subject that I'm looking at, you see? Now I come back and I smudge again. It's starting to happen now. See how that feeling of his breast on the screen feels like he's coming forward now? You can feel the rise and fall of some of the muscles in the fur. Yep. Then what I might do is make my eyes a little bit bigger. Because if you look, the mouth is smaller than the eyes, not the eyes smaller than the mouth. And then this way, yeah, I can play with that. Oh yeah, I like that better, yeah. Because now if you look from the middle of the eye here, that's where the snout is. Oh, yeah. Yep. And there's a roundness of the other one here. Here and here. There you go. Uh-oh. I want to do it enough to where even Rambo looks at this picture and want to jump off the phone, Miss Miss Paulette. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do, I want this to come out so well that Rambo looks at the screen and we'll jump at the screen. What you got a cat, another cat in this house? Yep. How dare you have another cat? You're like me. <laughs> Where you get him? Yeah. That's a mean one. Man, he's got that intense don't he? Yeah. Ooh, wee. Rambo. Oh, oh. oh I was making him look like a pain. Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. He gives me that feel, though, Miss Paulette. Your cat gives me that feel, man. He's serious. I got rodents to find. You know what I mean? I got things. I got a job to do. Yeah. Places to be. Yeah, you know. I got a windowsill that I need to relax in and watch the birds. That's what I'm going to kill today. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the liberty to expand some areas, uh -huh. you can do the same thing. Like if you expand some areas where we first started, to be able to get closer to what the photograph is telling me. My version, I had to make the eyes a little bit bigger. And once I did it, I see how it made more sense. So, you know what I mean? You have to understand those things with your version while you're there. Of course, we're going to look at the screen, you guys, and say, okay, what you got? What can you do? But generally speaking, you are self-teaching yourself right now. You know that, right? Take a suggestion, and then now what you're doing is you're applying the suggestion underneath your own hand. Me, that's all you can do for a person. You see, and now watch. I erase that out. Look, watch when I put the pupil in for this guy here. And then now 
one was darker in the middle here. Now we're really closer to what Rambo is doing now. You see? Oh, there's a there's a yellowness underneath of his pupil that lets you know he's just excited at this moment. So yeah, Mr. Your cat is a performer. He loves the camera. Yeah. Matter of fact, we got his name this morning, just a few minutes ago. He got excited and started uh uh not, like knocking down pencils and stuff and scooting them across the floor. He got like I'm ooh, ooh, I'm, I'm excited. And he got hyped. Yeah. I know what you're about to do. You're about to do that artwork. Come on, let's do it together. <laughs> That's what you say. Come on, let's do it together. Let's get these pencils ready. They're gonna be waiting for you. Oh, that's what you can say. You can say he's the manager. He's like, come on, Paul. We got things we got to do. Let's draw today. <laughs> that's how he was knocking the pencils around. You see? So then look at how things are aligning. You know, now this is where you start looking to say, okay, where's the back of his back aligning with his eyes, like Don suggested, to look at the photograph and see. Then you look at the photograph and see that it's there. Now you make that come out of there, you see? Mm -hmm. Now this is where you start paying attention more and more to the cat's details now, or what we call the cat's features. Once you get the tone in, now you can start talking about the direction where the fur is going. And the fur always goes from the nose back. back. Down and away from the front of the face. And that way, because if the cat came out tail first, that would be horrific because all the hair would stand up and cause more issues for the mother. So, no, that's why when the head comes out, if you notice, all the fur and everything comes from the nose and goes back, down the back and everything, away, away from the head. So the world not coming this way is going this way, down and back this way, you know, down here, down here, down, down, and then off to the sides. If you look at the photographs, you can see the direction of the fur. And at this point, when you get your confidence together with his placement and his form, and you can start to feel him through your piece, now you want to switch modes. And start looking into the direct surface surface stuff that's happening. Make sure you start smudging out areas and the, and the muzzle and things. You start getting that together. You see, because you know if you don't have white, uh, uh, if you're not working on own paper like me or possibly Nadine, I think Nadine's on the news print. Then you can use the right there. But if you're on white paper. Then Miss Paul, if you see on the white paper, I got the brown paper. Not, well, you got the brown paper too. Yeah, that's what I bought. That's so all. That's what I drew my last picture oh, on okay. too. Pull the white chalk out. You good? Pull the white chalk out now, and have it by your side. You still can use your eraser because the eraser is going to show the tone of the paper as a third color. You see, when you erase, how I'm erasing. You already yeah. have two tones working, right? right. But now yeah. what's going to happen is if you come back in with the white chalk, that's going to be your third impression. Yeah. So now you would come in and start erasing out areas where you're saying the light is coming from, playing with the darks and lights, possibly getting into what the fur uh, pattern may be. If you don't want to do that, then you can be where I'm at. And then just go and look at those tones on the cat, start erasing or smudging using a paper towel. Or if you don't like the hand getting dirty like me, then use the paper towel or the tortillion. Okay. Ooh, this is going to be a nice one. Hey, you know, you guys, I go out and you know that, right? What? <laughs> Yeah, Nadine, when I'm done these, I put them in 18 by 24 uh, plastic. Nice. 
and we sell them. Grab them because I hung up the last one on my closet door, and I said, "Well, how do you keep this thing uh, from, um, you know, erasing? Because you know the charcoal is very soft." Paula, there's a place online called ClearBags.com. ClearBags.com. Okay. Yep. C L E A R B A G S dot com. What that is uh, the company that sells those? Uh, let me see here. Hold on. I'll show you one real quick. While you guys are staying on, I'll show you one real quick. So this is what I do to put in a drawer or to protect them overall. Or if somebody wants to purchase, you can get that out the way real quick and I have to worry about putting it in the frame. Right. Yeah. Hold on. I'm just going to take one out. I don't have an image. I got everything tucked away. I'm doing another event later on in the day. So, okay, guys. This yeah, you can oh. barely see. So it's a, it's a, it's a bag. I mean, big bag. You see? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Plastic bag. This is eighteen by twenty. It's almost like a sleeve. Mm -hmm. And then we, I can slide it right in it. Okay. All right, Lord. Let me do you one better. Let me take one of the images out that I have. That's um, that's in the bag already. Let's do that. Hold on, because it's good too. Like I do that for the customers that I do portraits for. You put it in that plastic, and then you don't have to right away have the frame right away. If you don't have a frame, then you can hold off having a frame. Okay. Like, okay. Let me pull up what you did that you might remember. Hold on. Oh yeah, I'll do this one. The post guy that we hold up. See Nadine, it's in the plastic. Oh nice. Oh this, okay. Yeah. This is one of the ones I did. So you put them in the plastic. Okay. And you can buy these from a place called clearbags.com. They got several different sizes, but I would tell you to go more so for your standard sizes. So eight and a half by 11, 11, 17, uh, uh, 18 by 24, 24 mm -hmm. by 32, or 24 by 36. These are sizes. Mm -hmm. So I would get the bag with standard sizes. So then this way it makes it easier for you to protect them and cart them around if you needed to. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. say for instance, Mr. I wanted to do a small table. You know what I mean? They have them for books too, Miss Paulette. So if you if you get your books and you uh -huh. wanted to protect them too, well, you can get the same bags from that same company to uh, protect your books when you sell them. If you had a table or whatever the case may be. Don? Yes? I have a question. Yes? Is this charcoal or pencil? This is charcoal. I just... I was, I, I, I just got on the I just got on the session. I couldn't get on it. Nadine had to help get on the session. Yeah, that's charcoal and charcoal pencil. So it's both charcoal pencils, though, not graphite. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yep. So good. You thought well. How are you, Suzanne? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? I like that new artwork you've been putting up. The oh yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Yeah. I was I like, okay. Like... <laughs> no. I was like, okay. I'm scared of you. Okay. <laughs> you know, I was like, watch out now. <laughs> That's how serious business is going down, boy. But it looks it, it looks wonderful, like you're having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I have to um, I have to do one more charcoal um, 
drawing of a live model, and then that's the end of class. Ah, oh, cool. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Man. Glad you enjoyed it. But you see, I don't want to finish this, and this is Nadine. I want to do sessions and do this with everybody. Okay. You know, don't want to, don't want to, you know, because there's certain adjustments. Even when I look at my own, like, I need to adjust the eyes a little bit more, you see? Uh -huh. Get the real eyes and everything together, and then we can talk about that. We can talk about the the uh, uh, pattern and the, uh -huh. how would you say coloring in that pattern that's black and white and how we would handle that. Uh -huh. You know, but the overall idea for today is to get his basic body in and to pull him out of context, like we was talking about. Mm -hmm. We don't want to, we didn't want to have to do all the stuff on the tabletop. So then we just took the makeshift edge of the back edge of the table to use it as to make a place for him to be looking like he's sitting on. So he's not looking like he's just nowhere. Mm -hmm. You see, another thing you can do is to put a window in the background. I'll talk about that on the next session. Mm -hmm. I got a picture for you to draw. Uh, I got a picture for you. Picture for you to draw. Hold on, we've been doing a cat. I know. I'm just joking. Oh, okay. No, no, we can do a dog next time around. No problem. That was me. <laughs> Dogs next time around, but cats right now. It's because of Nadine went to uh, Iceland. And she said they have a festival or a, a cultural thing that they do where they praise the cats at the time of the year. And now, Paulette is a cat lover because her cat, Rambo, normally makes an introduction on her on her work when she's working with us. <laughs> Rambo. So we tied all that together. That's why we're doing the cat. We're doing the cat for a specific reason. The Icelandic culture and Miss Paulette. Yep. Yeah, you know, cats think they're gods. <laughs> yeah, they See, do. That's why I like presented that story. Like Nadine, tell us tell us about that story again about how they are out there in Iceland about the uh, cats. Okay. So let me see if I can do this correctly here. Um so I I of course last week I went to Iceland and they uh, celebrate the Christmas cats. Cool. And the Christmas cat, you know, uh, they, they pride themselves on their folklore stories. And so the Christmas cat, um, basically to say the Christmas cat is among the best known Icelandic Christmas creatures. It is a humongous animal, I hope I'm saying that right, as described in this particular poem, they talk about this poem, is well known by the people of all ages. As legend has it, the cat eats those who don't get new clothes for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and to, to avoid this horrible fate, you better do your chores in order to receive it if only new socks and some simple garment. The cat is, and then it talks about what the cat is related to in other Nordic uh, countries, as well as the Scandinavian Yule goat. And, wow. uh, and they actually uh, cook some really good goat. <laughs> I like goat. Go, go to and uh, um, um, they, they, you know, they talk about the cat. Today is often said to be the household pet of the equally terrifying gi giantess gorilla and her lazy husband Lapaloa, I guess, and their Yule lads, Yule, Y-U-L-E lads. So they, they don't know if it's true or not, but I say all that to say when I went uh, to Reykjavik, um, they had the Christmas cat out. And uh, let me see if I can capture this for you so that you can see it. And here is the Christmas cat. Oh, wow. Right. 
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You look wow. terrible. Wow. I, love yeah. you. I love it. Yeah. So people were coming and uh and taking pictures of it and uh and it's right there in the center of the, the main part of town. And uh yeah. So, so Oh, hero! They just drag him out for this time of the year. Yeah, I, I, it was it was fun. It was a lot okay. of it, the experience. Now, oh, oh, they drag it back on the screen again for a second. Hello, okay, hold on. I've seen societies everywhere. All hail the cat! <laughs> oh, yeah, all hail the cat. Let me see if I. Oh, I don't have the right one up. Okay, let's cancel this out. I'm sorry, I was trying to share it again. Um, close this out. Okay. Big time. Yep. It's just that yep. it was interesting, and I, I felt just like, like how you guys felt, or how you felt, Nadine. That would be a, a cool thing to do. Based upon in America, we got a lot of people that love cats, man, and yep. we don't have a thing like that with cats. Yep. And um, the Thank poem. You. The poem they reference is, you all know the cat of Christmas. The cat was huge and fat. No one knew where he came from, nor where he was at. He opened his glowering, glowering eyes wide, each like a burning gem. It wasn't for that faint of heart to face them. If he's still around, I know not, but nothing would be his fare if everyone could on Christmas have new clothes to wear. So maybe you'll have a heart and give help to the weak and small for numerous needy children get nothing at all. And searching for those who suffer from shortage of light for true per, may perhaps make your Christmas merry too. Oh, wow. so charity type of thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so there you have it. The Christmas cats. I love oh. it. So the, the, the type people that don't have stuff to make people give, you know, they don't want to be the cat, you know. Uh, yeah, or the cat is going to come and, and get you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the cat is going to fish us. See the there you go. They make the people, they make the people feel. Cats, guys, think, think about how we love cats so much here, but we have a thousand people like that for cats. We only say to them, be a comfort to us, a companion, and get rid of the rodent. Yep. yep. It's like you got a job to do. Get to work it. Yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? Uh, so I just found out interesting that you have another culture that that holds the cat holds the cat very high for another specific reason. You know what I mean? It may be true, it may be not, but it is very interesting, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I did. I found it to be really, really interesting. Yeah. That's so cool. Glad you got to go there. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Now, this picture this week, Swan, you can thank you can thank Nadine for her travels and Miss Paulette for her love. We're doing thank a you. Rambo. Yeah. Rambo the thank you. Rambo the cats. You take your time, everybody. Then you just start to look at what the lights are. Then you start from there with the dark and light. That's all. That's all. Mm -hmm. Now start getting rid of where your uh, underwork is, your undertone work. You just start smudging out those areas. Use the uh, your paper towel or the tortillion. Mm -hmm. Sure, you still want to do it. It's like all the time. I still got something to do in my eyes and here. To make it look more like Rambo's eyes, you see? Yeah. And I may be in this side of his head just a little bit, just to get that side. So when I start putting the pattern in, mm -hmm. you see the pattern that's distinct to him. Oh, man. This is where we just get all that together now, Ms. Paulette. You know, uh -huh. I start putting else together, erase things down, condense things like. Cat's muzzle is small. It's not really that big. The domesticated cat. I would bring it in like so. 
See, just to prepare it where it is, you know, bring it in. If you look right up near where the uh, pupils are, if you look down from the pupil, yeah, that's the middle of his mouth, I mean, the sides of his mouth. So if I look from here and look straight down, that's where his mouth is, you see? And then all of this is darker now. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, Nadine, where did you get your easel? It was gifted to me. It was uh, it was used, <laughs> and happily, I I have received it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, you can go to uh, uh, artisans and crafters on Second and uh, Market, and go yeah. in there. Base a nice selection for good prices. If you wanted to get one like that. Yeah, I do. I need a tall one. Yeah, go to uh, go to artisans and crafters. Their price is a little bit cheaper than um, Dick Blick. Yeah, I like that store, artisans crafters. Well, go there because that one's a little bit cheaper to buy. That type of equipment is cheaper than buying it from uh, Dick Blick. You see, and then once you put it in. Change the mouth, bring it to come. It's starting to come into that neighborhood of looking more like Rambo. <laughs> you know? And then also, Sue Ann, they got people online that make them too as well. They make them? Yeah, you can get your easel made too. And um, you can get special features put on just specifically for you. So I would check into that as well. That was work I used to do, but I know other people in the city, and I know you can go online and you'd be able to find some some good people in your area that might be woodworkers that can make you an easel for a nice price too as well. That'd be cool. Long lasting, you can have it for the rest of your life. All right. How's everybody doing? Working it through. All right, yeah. Take your time, everybody. It's not nothing that you have to really get crazy over. Just really look at what the cat is doing and see where the, where the white parts are, where the, the colored parts are, things like this, you know? Look at the you know, these lighter areas, you know? Put them in, erase them in and then adjust them. Adjust the tone. If you look on the screen, you see me playing with the adjustments too as well. <coughs> you see? So take your time. Take your time. We're going to have two sessions to finish this guy up, to finish up Rambo. You see? So once again, this week was all about the simplification of an item that you're looking at. How to simplify and how to pull it out of context when you don't want to deal with everything else in the picture. How did you pull the item out that you want to look at? And that's what we went over today. So we'll do the same thing next week too as well. But I gotta go right now. I'll be back next week. Okay. Glad you dropped by. Thank you. Me too. All right. Yeah. See you soon. Okay. Bye bye. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. That's another one of our, our members that comes in every now and then, one of our regulars. She gives us her time uh, when she can in between her activities. So thank you once again, Sue Ann. Thank you once again. Keep creating. Yes. Yeah. So now you see them. That's the best thing to start. You know what I mean? To get everything going. You're going to work on that nose and the mouth this week to really understand how to make that uh, you know, to get that character to come out. Mm -hmm. And once that's there, you know, you have catechists, kittiest catechists, domesticated catechists. Yeah. All right, Nadine. I don't know. That's the stop right now. You can be done. What time is it? 11.52. That's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. We lost, we lost Miss Paulette's picture. Oh, okay. 
Just wanted to let you know, Miss Paulette. Okay, going back. Oh, right. So, how are you feeling about this, Miss Paulette? Like, it's so cool because I'm like, I'm I'm just loving the idea. I would have never been able to draw it like it. Just the, the way he just starts. I was like, wow, what is that? Then I saw when he was talking about it and just the circle. I mean, you know, I've seen how people do, draw the circles first and then they start doing the, thing, you know, like filling in the features and stuff like that. But the different steps he was using to do this picture was just so amazing. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm like uh, looking at my picture. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I have to keep reminding myself what he said: perfection is a lie, repetition. So what is it? Perfection is yeah, a lie. You got it. It's a lie. Repetition is the truth. Yep. Yeah. You know, because uh, of course, mine don't look as as good as you, but I'm like, okay, okay, well, at least I'm getting it where, you know, that you have captured him. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not, you know, but at least I got, you know, you know, following you. Along, you know. There you and, go. But I'm like, the little stuff I'm doing is like so exciting because I'm like, wow, every step is like, just like, it's so amazing, you know, to be able to, you know, recreate this, you know, just, you know, trying to follow you, you know, and I'm like, oh, my face, you know, his, his face is not as great. Mine is like a little bit darker. So I was trying to figure out how to lighten it up by using some chalk within the gray and then smudging it. So I'm coming up with my own idea on how to, you know, fix it and stuff like that. But, oh, um, oh my this, goodness, Miss Paulette is getting it. Yeah, yeah well, cool. that's what happens. Because Don, you didn't you say earlier in the process you're teaching yourself through yes. through the act of doing as yes. you're learning uh, and discovering your own line, your own mark. Yeah. Ah, drop the mic. <laughs> drop the mic, Miss Paulette. See it. I see it. Yeah, and the more and more you do, you can look at the first one that you did when we first started this stuff and look at what you did today. You can see your advancement. You can see how your eye and hand coordination is building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then after, now your own shorthand, you start looking for ways on how you can manipulate it in ways that make you feel a little bit more comfortable. That's it's okay. That's what you're all I'm showing you is a suggestion of getting your basic, your foundation together. Once that's together, you supposed to take off then. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. You're doing exactly what you need to do. I'm, I'm happy that you got it now. And I hope we wrap that perfectionist uh, chick that you got there and put her in the closet. <laughs> yep. Don't backslide. <laughs> yep, no back now. It's all about forward motion. I know it, it's hard. It's hard to not backslide. <laughs> nah, no backsliding. You can look back and laugh, but no backsliding. That's hard. I would catch myself down with be like, you're going backwards. I'm like, I didn't mean to. Nope. <laughs> nope. Can't go backwards. Gotta go forward. Unless you're saying that piece of artwork is about a backwards movement, then I go, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you listening to what you're saying? Yeah. But that's pretty much it for this week, everybody. All right. Yeah. Last night. And let me tell you how I had to do it. Okay. You know, I'm looking at the little video. The video is very short. And then your other, you know, colors promo things that come up here. And I kept trying to uh, stop, I get a little bit done in it, but stop, you know, and go keep going back to the um, the introduction. And it kept doing that. I said, you know what? Let me just put this thing on Paul, freeze it. Mm -hmm. And then I froze it. And then I was able to finish the picture because I then I could have it, you know, just that one picture just sitting there while I, you know, followed, you know, the, uh, your, um, 
fill in all the plates that she had done, you know, this past Sunday. And so, I was like, wow. I wish I, you know, I said, it took a minute before I figured out just stop the, the frame, you know, of the right. uh, but so, Miss Paulette, you were looking at the promo. You weren't looking at the actual rebroadcast. The rebroadcast is in the it's in the featured section, so you can oh. look at it and you can see the whole the whole thing that he did for the final part. Oh, okay. So I yeah, I kept saying I kept looking for if mm -hmm. that was going down to the old. Uh, you know, uh, earlier broadcast, I mean, you know, like, you know, and how you scroll past stuff that you looked at before, mm -hmm. whatever you didn't look at before. And I kept looking and looking and stuff. So I should have gone to the feature part. Was, okay. So Sorry. what up? So let me see if I can make it easier for you. I finished this old last night. Mm hmm That's good. Yeah. I told you I was in the mood to do something, you know, artsy. And I said, oh, which I do, what should I do? So when I, you know, talk to you, that remind me, you know, I could go and get that picture, you know. Like, well, I was thinking about it anyway, but I went on ahead. And Good, but let's, let, let's get to going and going and doing and get this cat to going. And mm -hmm. then move to the next thing so we can see everybody next week and move into the next stages where we put that white fur in. Everybody. Putting the white fur in. All right. All right, then. Well. All right. All right, Miss Paula. Everybody. <laughs> All right, everybody. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. Um, if you're watching this in the rebroadcast, please leave your comments about what do you think about um how we're coming along with Rambo the cat. Um, thank you to Miss Paula for sharing her her Rambo with us or Rambo making his appearances, he's now a star on our show or on a, in, our, um, in our group, should I say. Um, for all those, if you, if you want to check out, Don, has, his shop is open and he has cool t-shirts. I'm about to, in the next couple of days, order mine for the holidays. It's a keep letting, you know, it's a keep creating t-shirt uh, with uh, various um illustrations i guess you would call it that uh don creating idea that's the idea of keeping you creative and keeping you to understand and keep drawing is another way of using a graphic image everybody so come on over check out donstevensart.com and go straight to the shop let's have fun keep creating. go straight to the shop and yo you can give it to your kids and you know i mean it's just it's just one of those things you can wear every day you know these are our uniform but that stuff great gifts uh great things to spread the word about keep creating uh we just want to spread the love and inspire others to create and as creating, always, the ultimate mission hashtag keep creating, keep creating you must keep everybody all right everybody Let's thank you for joining us today uh we hope to see you again next sunday 10 a.m and our pop-up art session. Thank you, everybody. Welcome.